So the course modules of this subject uh, includes uh, the uh, an appreciation of the financial markets, and then <clears throat> we'll go to financial statements preparation, analysis, and interpretation. After the first two modules, we'll have our first quiz. So what will happen is that we'll have activities where you'll be given points. And then uh, that's why for this uh, morning, before we, uh, before we go to the discussion of the lesson, okay, before I uh, discuss, uh, give a brief lecture about financial markets, financial institutions, we're going to have a uh, financial literacy assessment. Okay, so we're going to have a Kahoot quiz. I'm sure you're familiar with that. What we're going to do is that the Kahoot quiz will be collected. Okay, and at the end of the term, uh, it will be added. And if you get 95% uh, percent and above, I'll give you bonus of 5% to your final grade. Now take note, it's percent, it's not points. No? So kunyari, ang final grade mo, 92. No? So if you got 95% to 100 dun sa sa mga exercise natin na ganito, you'll get plus 5%. So that's 92 plus 5%, you'll, you'll get a 4. No? Instead of a 3, you'll get a 4. So you can jump to, to, uh, to places. No? So I urge you to uh, attend the class and, uh, and join the activity like, like this. So iba-iba, may kahoot, merong may group, may group work, but you'll be graded also individually. Okay, so could you kindly uh, uh, open the kahoot.it, no? Diba, familiar naman nata kayo, diba, sa, ano, sa, sa ganitong activity? Okay, so this will be questions about basic finance and some questions about financial statements. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's load the pin. Uh, pag nag-load kayo, guys, ang name nyo, family name, then first name, tapos ano, at tapos... Uh, uh, walang space, no? Seven six three four five zero one. Are we complete? Okay, I think we're complete. So let's start the game, guys. Uh, this, there are 20 points here. So this is just the first of many activities that we're going to have. And as I said, guys, this will be cumulated. This, uh, the points that you're going to get from this exercises in class will be cum cumulated and then it will uh, uh, be uh, given equivalent points. So what, what's best good about this is that plus percentage na to, no? hindi siya plus points. Percentage kagad. Okay, so let's start the game. 20 questions on basic finance. Okay, company's balance sheet. We know that the balance sheet consists of the assets, liabilities, and equity of the company. And it's, kailan yun? 
at a specific point in time. Diba? Kaya nga makikita niyo balance sheet December 31. As of December 31. It's at that specific point in time. No? Magkano yung cash? Magkano yung receivables? Magkano yung inventory? Etc. No? Magkano yung fixed uh, assets? So at a specific point in time. Not necessarily at the end of the calendar year. Kasi pwedeng fiscal year. Pwedeng nari June 30 or May 31. It's not always at the end of the calendar year. Okay? Uh, hindi rin for a given period of time. Kasi pag period of time, income statement na yun, no? Hindi rin at the end of the fiscal year. So not necessarily fiscal year or calendar year. Basta at a specific point in time. Okay? So five of you got it? Okay? So let's see. So... Abel, uh, getting the first uh, first slot here. Okay, so let's go to question number two. The main objective of a business organization is. Ano ba yung main objective ng isang business organization? Okay, the main objective is, unfortunately guys, it's not to maximize profit, neither is it to minimize cost, neither is it to satisfy customers. One of you got it, but it's, it is to maximize shareholder value. Okay, please remember that. Now, we're not saying that, we're not saying that uh, uh, maximizing profit is not important. It is important. We're not saying that Minimizing cost is not important. It is important. What, what we're saying is that uh, dapat, the main objective should be to maximize shareholder value. It's not also to satisfy customers. These are important, pero hindi siya yung main objective. And we'll see uh, in a while. No? Okay, next question. Okay, so <clears throat> ano yung correct dito guys? <clears throat> Sabi ng una, CFO daw ranks above the CEO. That's not true, no? Si CEO mas mataas. Chairman of the board must always must also be the CEO. Not necessarily. Pwede ang chairman of the board is not the CEO. CFO generally reports to the chief accounting officer or controller. No, magkaiba sila, no? Uh, the board of directors is the highest ranking body of a corporation. That's that's the true one. No? So, si Board of Directors ang pinakamataas na ano. Uh, guys, sandali lang ha. Uh, a minute. Alright, sorry about that. So, 20 of you got it correct? That's good. Okay, so number one ngayon, si Abel pa rin. Okay. Pumahabol si Elijah, si Jillian. So let's keep it coming, guys. Remember, although uh, you're competing with yourself, uh, with the others, guys, pero technically you're competing with yourself. Kasi ang points nyo naman dito, pag tama yung points nyo, guys, yan you still get full credit kahit na hindi kayo nasa podium finish. Huh? Okay, next. Next question, fourth question. Money markets are markets for... Okay, so five of you got it. Now, guys, dalawang klaseng ano, no, mar markets as far as the term is concerned. Dalawang klaseng financial markets as far as um, the term is concerned. Merong short term at saka merong long term. Yung short term, guys, ang duration ng mga instruments na yan, ng mga securities, is one year or less. Tapos meron naman tayong mga securities that, that traded that are 
for more than one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, ang tawag sa kanila, capital markets. Okay, so dito, foreign currencies, hindi, mar hindi money market siya. Ito, foreign currencies are traded in the forex, no? foreign exchange market. Consumer automobile loans, hindi yan man money markets kasi uh, hindi, naman, hindi naman loan market to, no? Common stocks, guys, ang mga stocks, they're traded in the stock exchange and stock exchanges are considered as capital markets. No? Ito, in short term, debt securities. Okay? Mga utang to, treasury bills at saka commercial paper. Ano kaya ang difference nito? Commercial papers, guys, are IOUs, mga utang to, no? Ah, uh, uh, but security to na kapag ang corporation na umuutang, short term na utang, no? nabibigay sila ng uh, security na, which is called a commercial paper. Ang ibig sabihin niya, parang proof lang yan na umutang sila. It's a document, it's a contract that they're going to pay this, they're going to borrow this amount and pay this amount up, uh, at a certain a particular time. Kunyari, in three months time and may interest din yan, no? commercial paper. How about treasury bills? Pag treasury bills, guys, utang din yan. Sino yung umuutang? Anyone? Pakichat, please. Or pakisound off. Sino umuutang, guys, pag nakita nyo treasury, treasury uh, bills? Government po. Yes. Thank you. Sino to? Pag nag-answer kay guys, pakiintroduce mo yung sarili niya. Elijah po. Elijah. Thank you, Elijah. Elijah, that's correct, no? Pag uh, treasury bills, guys, yung government ang umuutang, no? So, for example... Makikita nyo minsan sa news, treasury bill rate, ibig sabihin, uh, kunyari, na, na, 30 days, 90 days, yung government umuutang ng fund, short term, after 30 days, babayaran yun. Of course, may interest yun. After 90 days, babayaran yun. Depende sa term. Up to 360, no? up to uh, one year. Pag, uh, treasury pag treasury bills, guys, hanggang one year lang yun. Pag treasury bonds naman, B-O-N-D-S, pag treasury bonds, that's more than one year. Government din ang um umihiram nun. Treasury bonds, treasury bills, it's the government that's borrowing. Ang treasury bills, <coughs> nasa money market. Ang treasury bonds, nasa capital markets. No? Kasi ang capital market, guys, more than one year. Okay, clear yon. Common stock then, capital market siya. Alright, so we learned here, guys. Commercial paper, ang umuutang niyan, <coughs> corporation. And yung utang na yan is for less than one year. Tapos, just like treasury bills, are, may, may interest yan. Short-term short -term debt siya. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Let's see, ano nangyari? So, si Abel pa rin yung number one. And then, uh, si uh, Sophia daw, up 13 places. Okay? Highest climber. Congratulations, Sophia. Okay, next. Which of the following is an example of a capital market instrument? Okay, sinabi natin to kanina, di ba? Common stock, capital market yan. Commercial paper, money market yan kasi short term yan, no? Uh, Philippine government treasury bills, sabi natin kanina, money market din yan. Bankers acceptance. Anong tong bar bankers ac acceptance or bills of exchange? Okay, uh, the way I illustrate this, uh, imagine a check, guys, no? Imagine, imagine check eh. So somebody gave this to you, an individual gave this to you. Tapos nakalagay doon yung amount, kunyari, amounting to 100,000. Tapos may date kung kailan payable, kunyari December 31, 2021. Okay? So, makukuha mo yung pera na yan. Uh, parang pinamis ng tao na nag-issue ng check <coughs> na you can get this from that particular bank, no? itong amount na to, on December 31. So, ang banker's acceptance naman, parang ganun din, parang check din siya, in a sense, Pero ang, nag, ang nagbibigay ng assurance na babayaran yan, yung banko mismo. Okay, whereas a check, a personal check, yung nag-garantee niyan, yung tao nag-issue ng check, yung banker's acceptance, ang nag-issue niyan, yung banko mismo. So, halos walang risk yan. No? Kasi kunyari, ang nagbigay ng ano, BPI, eh, pinapangako ni BPI na magbabayad sila ng 1 million on a certain date. No? Yun ang tawag na banker's acceptance or bills of exchange. So, halos walang risk yan kasi 
alam naman natin na capable magbayad yung mga financial institutions again. Unlike kung personal check, no? Between a personal check, <coughs> kunyari ako nag-issue ng check, 1 million on July 1, as compared to a banker's acceptance, 1 million July 1, syempre, mas si risk yung, yung in-issue ko kasi as an individual. Okay, so yung mga banker's uh, acceptance yan, halos uh, riskless yan. Halos walang risk. <coughs> okay, so, uh, okay, I hope clear sa atin to, no? Yung yung mga concepts yan. Okay, so si Abel pa rin yung nasa taas. Sophia, three consecutive na tama. No? Okay, next. Question number six. On a balance sheet, retained earnings are not unspent cash because... Okay, retained earnings. Uh, ang retained earnings, guys, anong klaseng, anong klaseng company natin makikita yan? Will you find it in a sole proprietorship? Will you find it in a uh, partner? Sole, yeah, sole proprietorship, will you find it in a partnership? Or will you find it in a corporation? Which of the three, guys, makikita natin retained earnings? Anyone? Pakisagot, please. Saan natin makikita yung retained earnings? Sa sole proprietorship, sa partnership, o sa corporation? Um, hello po. Yes? Uh, I think it's the corporation. Yeah. Sino to please? Liam. Ha? Liam. Liam. Liam, cor correct. Thank you so much, Liam. No? Uh, maraming salamat, Liam. Tama. Tama si Liam. It's the corporation. You will not find retained earnings, guys, sa sole proprietorship. Ang makikita lang natin sa sole proprietorship, yung capital account, Yung kunyari, by loan, capital, yun lang. Pag partnership naman, several partners, then capital. Pag corporation, you'll find there yung stock, common stock, preferred stock, at saka retained earnings. Okay? So yung retained earnings, guys, these are, ito yung amount na, na, uh, na profit na na-generate ng company na plinobak sa operations ng business. Hindi siya dinistribute as dividends. Kasi yung profit, pwedeng ibigay yan, i-return back yan sa, sa mga owners, uh, shareholders uh, uh, in, the form of, uh, in the form of cash, no? Or it can be retained lang. It can be retained lang by, uh, sorry, it can be flowed back to the, uh, to the uh, owners as dividends or it can be retained by the, by the business. Okay, uh, guys, excuse me. Okay, sorry about that guys. So, ang retained earnings guys, hindi yan unspent cash. Kasi, yan ang ginamit para i-flow back sa operations ng business. Para gamitin dun sa uh, business. Diba, sabi ko kanina, ang ang profit can be used either uh, to, it can be flowed back to the business itself. Ibig sabihin, flowed back, ginagamit ulit para sa business. Or it can be distributed, returned back to the uh, to the uh, owners of the business in the form of dividends. <clears throat> okay, so next. So, nagkaroon tayo ng changes sa, ano, sa, sa, sa podium finishes. Si Gab na ang na, nasa number one ngayon. Okay, so let's do this, guys. Although it's a competition with your classmates, but it's technically competing with yourself. No? Kasi points, uh, ang binibigay natin, ang binibilan natin dito, points nyo. No? <clears throat> okay, next question, seventh question. Single most important account, accounting number on the income statement for managers and analysts. Okay, answer is, well, 23 of you got it. That's very good. Ang pinaka-importanteng number, guys, sa income statement is the net income after tax. Pa pagkatapos natin i uh, yung sales less lahat ng operating expenses, okay, you'll have your operating profit. Tapos tanggalin natin si, uh, yung mga financial charges, si interest expense, 
after subtracting interest expense, you'll have net income before tax. And then finally, pag binayin si tax, you'll have net income after tax. Okay? So, hindi si EBIT, guys. Si EBIT kasi hindi pa natin binabawa si interest and taxes. Hindi rin si operating profit. Hindi rin si uh, earnings available for common shareholders. It's a net income or net profit after tax. <clears throat> so, 23 of you got this? Okay, so still gab, nasa taas pa rin. Okay. Uh, up three places, si Ingrid. No? Highest climber natin ngayon, si Ingrid. Okay, next. Question number eight. EPS, earnings per share, is calculated by? Okay, how do we compute earnings per share? As the name suggests, guys, E, no? Earnings per share EPS. Earnings tapos per share. I din divide natin ng, ng share, yung number of shares. So the answer is this one. Kung magkano yung earnings, uh, it's actually net income after tax divided by the number of common shares. Ilan yung common shares? So bawat share, uh, so for example, there are 1 million shares, tapos 1 million yung net income after tax. So that's 1 million divided by 1 million. It's it means na uh, <clears throat> 1 peso yung yung earnings per share. So ibig sabihin sa bawat share which I own dun sa business, I'm earning 1 peso. <clears throat> Yun ang ibig sabihin ng earnings per share. Okay? So let's go to the next one. So medyo nagbago tayo ng position si Josh. Pinasa taas ngayon with four correct answers in a row. Okay, next question. Uh, nine Ninth question, pag i-increase yung inventory, expecting sales to increase, ano yung result nito? Okay. Pag nag-increase ang inventory, guys, ano nangyari? Nag-increase ang inventory, ibig sabihin, bumili ng inventory. Ba? <coughs> Expecting sales to increase, expectation pa lang. Hindi pa nangyayari, no? <clears throat> so what happens when we acquire inventory? Bumili tayo ng inventory. Walang kinalaman yung depreciation, no? Kasi inventory naman, hindi naman fixed asset yan. Okay? Mali din yung inflow of cash. Kasi kung bumili ka ng inventory, naglabas ka ng pera. So that's an outflow of cash. That's what that means. No? Increase inventory, ibig sabihin ng invest sa inventory, bumili ng inventory, naglabas ng pera para magkaroon ng inventory. Outflow of cash. Okay? So next, next question. So mayroon naglalaro-laro tayo no? sa mga positioning dito. Si Gab naman yung number one dito. Okay? So si Cedric, strict with the three correct answers in a row. Okay, next. Tenth question. Ano yung arrangement nito sa balance sheet, guys? Itong assets na to, itong current assets na to. How will it be arranged sa balance sheet? Okay. Hmm, six of you got it, no? Okay. Uh, how how are assets in general arranged sa balance sheet? Is it alphabetical? <clears throat> guys, paki chat or paki ano, paki sound off, guys. Paano ba ina-arrange yung balance sheet kasi may arrangement 'yan. How are uh, the components of the balance sheet arranged? Okay, thank you Elijah. It's arranged according to liquidity. Ang ibig sabihin ng liquidity, kung sino pinakamalapit sa cash, yun ang mauuna. <laughs> so, syempre dito guys, mauuna lagi si cash. No? Pagkatapos ni cash, ang susunod si marketable securities. Kasi si marketable securities guys, short-term investment yan. Ito, example nito, treasury bill yung kanina. Nag-invest ka sa treasury bill, 90-day treasury bill, 
or 30-day treasury bill, after 30 days, convert mo na into cash yan. So this is easily converted into cash. So dun sa degree na liquidity, na uuna yung cash, tapos yung marketable securities. Another name for marketable securities is short-term investments. Pangatlo guys, si receivables. <clears throat> diba? Si receivables ang pangatlo kasi nabenta na yan eh. Pangapat, si inventories. Okay, mali si number si red kasi yung inventories pang-apat na yan, no? Okay, si A, ibig sabihin, uh, C, cash, tapos si inventories, no. So, cash muna, tapos marketable securities, tapos receivables, tapos inventories, tapos prepayments. Okay? Prepayments. Okay, so, uh, that's the correct answer, no? Next. So, may, nagkaroon ng change tayo. Jillian, ang nangungunang na ngayon, no? Up five places, si John Ed. Okay, next. 11th question, what's networking capital? Okay, networking capital is a measure of a firm's overall liquidity. Actually, later on, pag-uusapan natin, not later on, in the next sessions, pag pumunta na tayo sa financial statements analysis, networking capital involves current assets and current liabilities. But it is, uh, it, it measures overall liquidity ng firm. So, nine of you got it? Uh, okay, hindi siya total assets, no? It's not total assets. It's current assets minus current liabilities. So, mali itong uh, letter B. Yung green naman, efficiency hindi. It's not a measure of how assets are utilized. So, it's not a an efficiency measure, but rather a measure of liquidity. Okay, next. Okay, so medyo nagkaroon tayo ng konting change. Trisha, highest climber, six places. Okay, next. <coughs> Question number 12. One fixed asset that is not depreciated is ano ba yung hindi na depreciate na fixed asset? Okay, that's very good. Most of you got it. Okay, cash. Guys, hindi fixed asset si cash, ha? Cash is not a fixed asset. Inventories is not a fixed asset. Equipment is a fixed asset, but it is depreciated. Land is a fixed asset, and it's not depreciated. <clears throat> we do not depreciate land. In fact, hindi nga namawala ng value yun eh. Historically, in fact, land up appraises in value. Tumataas yung value niya. Unlike yung mga other fixed assets like equipment, over time, bumababa yung value niya because of usage, no? Okay, next. Uh, so, may, may, meron tayong konting change sa uh, ano, position. Okay. Next question. Question number 13. Okay, sabi kasi dito, debt and equity, di ba? So, remember, assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. <clears throat> Tapos yung movement ng liabilities and equity, that forms part of financing activities. Di ba, sabi natin <clears throat> before, ang investing, yung mga operating assets. Ah, sorry, ang invest, ang uh, operating are the ones that are under the current assets and current liabilities, yung mga galaw nila. Ang investing naman, yung fixed assets, yung mga equipment. Ang financing naman, yung galaw ng liabilities at saan ng equity. So, it's financing. So, 10 of you got it? Okay. Uh, next. May galaw ba tayo? Okay. Uh, John Ed, streak of four correct answers in a row. Okay, next. Question number 14. Associated with the purchase or sale of fixed assets and business interest. 
fixed assets to so saan to guys Okay, you're correct. It's investing. Fixed assets, guys. No? Uh, ang operating kasi, yung movement siya ng receivables, inventory, prepayment, uh, trade payables, accounts payable, yung mga short-term assets to. So, yun ang operating. Pag uh, long-term assets like inventory, uh, equipment, land, etc., investing yan. No? Okay? So, most of you got it. That's very good. So, may galaw ba? May konting galaw. Sophia back with an answer streak of number 3. Okay, balik si Sophia sa podium finish. Next question. Question number 15. Expenses that appear on the income statement but do not involve an actual outlay of cash. Okay, this is actually a giveaway, guys. No, expenses na uh, nasa income statement daw, pero hindi actually hindi nag-involve ng cash outlay. Okay, ano example nito, guys? What's an example of an expenditure that does not involve a, an actual outlay of cash? Magbigay ng akin ng example ng mga expenses. Anyone, please? Ano mga example na expenses natin? Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Elijah. Elijah, paki, paki sabi ng answer mo? Ano po? Depreciation expense. Yes, po. correct. No? Correct. De depreciation, thank you, Elijah. Depreciation is an example of an expenditure that does not involve an actual outlay of cash. Lahat ng mga expenses, kanya, transportation expense, utilities expense, post expense, postal expense, uh, internet expense, whatever account title the company is using, lahat yan, it involves a cash outlay. So may mga very few uh, expenses na hindi talaga nagka-cash outlay. Depreciation expense. Kanya, depreciation expense, 10,000. Pag generalize natin depreciation expense na 10,000, it does not mean na naglabas ng pero na 10,000 yung, yung company. So it's an example of a non-cash charge. No? Meron iba pa, kunyari, amortization. No? Amortization of goodwill, amortization of patents. Those are examples of uh, charges, expenses that are non-cash. No? So magbibigay na example yan pagpunta natin sa module number 2. Okay, so most of you got it. That's very good. Okay, next. So may nagbago ba? Okay, wala masyadong bago. Si Richelle, uh, up three places. No? Next question, question number 16. So five more questions. Gain or loss in the sale of equipment is recorded in the cash flows as? <coughs> Okay, so most of you got it operating. Now, pag nag-acquire ng equipment, pag bumili ng equipment, papasok yun sa investing. Yung galaw ng cash, uh, pag bumili ng equipment, papasok yun sa, equi sa equipment. However, guys, yung nagbenta ka ng equipment, tapos yung gain or loss doon, hindi siya papasok sa investing. Doon siya papasok sa operating. Okay? So that's the answer. It forms yung gain or loss lang, ha? of a sale on an, of an equipment will fall will form part of operating activities. So, nagkaroon tayo ng bagong change ng leadership si uh, Mayuga, no? Ang number 1 na ngayon. Okay, Liam uh, up five places, highest climber. Next. Four more questions. Increase in prepayments is a
Okay, answer is, oops, konti lang nakakuha, no? Mukhang nagdaroon tayo ng misunderstanding dito. Uh, prepayments, guys, anong, anong, anong ba to? Asset ba to? Liability ba to? O equity to? Anong account to? Anong klaseng account? Anyone please? Paki, uh, un unmute yourself or paki-chat. Yes, asset siya. Anong klaseng asset? Generally, it's a what? What type of asset? Current asset yan, no? Current asset. So, pag nang-increase ka ng prepayment, uh, kunyari, prepaid rent. Prepaid rent is, in a sense, advanced payment ng rent na hindi mo pa na nagagamit, no? Prepaid card, bumili ka ng card, ng, kunyari, uh, Globe or Smart. That's a prepayment. Binayaran mo na, pero hindi mo pa na-expense yung, ano, hindi mo pa na-utilize yung card na yun. So, pag nag-increase yung prepayment, ibig sabihin, nag-increase yung advance payment mo. So, that's why it's a use of cash. It's a use of cash. Ay! Ah, sorry. Use of cash in operating, no? Hindi siya financing. Kasi ang financing, guys, hindi naman ito galaw ng liabilities or equity, eh. No? Okay, so prepayment is an asset, kaya papasok siya sa operating. Okay? It's a use of cash kasi naglabas ng pera. Okay? So, next. Uh, so, again, naglalaro-laro yung ano natin, ano? Naglalaro-laro yung uh, ano natin? Uh, third to the last question. Issue one of preferred stock is... Alright, okay. Pag nag-issue guys ang preferred stock or for that matter, nag-issue ng common stock, ang ibig sabihin nun, guys, na kumuha ng investor yung company. Pag nag-issue ng preferred stock, nagbigay ng common stock certificate, kunyari, no? Uh, as a way of illustration, yung company sa isang investor. Si investor, bago siya bibigyan ng certificate ng common stock, eh, magbabayad siya, mag magbibigay siya ng pera, no? So, it's a source of cash. And since preferred stock siya or common stock, nasa financing yan. <coughs> Remember, part siya ng equity. No? So, nag-issue ng preferred stock, ibig sabihin, nakakuha ng cash yung company. So, it's a source of cash under financing activities. Okay, so six of you got it? Okay, so, okay, wala masyadong change. Sedrich, up five places. Next. Second to the last question. Nagbenta ka ng 200 shares of Jollibee through a broker. Example to ng ano? Okay. Example siya ng secondary market. Okay? So kanina, <laughs> sabi natin money market at saka capital market, no? Capital markets, no? Meron din tayong primary market, meron tayong secondary market. Ang primary market, direct ka dun sa seller bumibili. Primary yun. Ngayon, uh, pag uh, bibili ka na through an exchange, kunyari, stock exchange, bibili ka ng uh, Jollibee through the stock market, kasi ang pwede lang magtansak ng business sa stock market is a stock broker. So that's what we call a secondary market transaction. Okay, later on, tingnan natin itong futures market. I'm going to explain this because this is very important. Okay, last question. So, same position pa rin. Si Jillian ang nangunguna. Okay. So, answer strictly Jillian. Three. Last question, guys. Last question is financial statement that shows the number of new shares issued by a firm. Right. The answer is statement of changes in share, shareholders' equity. Uh, almost all of you got it. Twenty-three, no? So hindi natin makikita yung uh, yung kung ilan yung new shares na inisyo. Hindi natin makikita sa balance sheet yan. Neither in the income statement, neither in the statement of cash flows. It's only in the statement of changes in the shareholders' equity. All right. So okay, podium finish natin. Congratulations. Third prize, si John Ed. Okay.
Second prize, 12 out of 20, Mayuga. And 14 out of 20, si Julian. Congratulations! Palakpakan naman natin yung ating mga classmates. May runner, runners up tayo, si Elijah, at saka si uh, Ramos. Sorry, hindi ko nakita yung first name. Okay, congratulations. I'm going to record this, guys. Re-reflect natin sa marks nyo. Tapos sabi nga natin yung mga results nyo sa mga ganitong activities, i I accumulate natin yan, i-add natin at tapos i-convert natin into percentage then i-bonus natin dun sa final grade nyo. Okay. Thank you so much guys. Uh, thank you so much for your participation. Okay. Let's now go back to our uh, lesson proper for today. I hope you learned something dun sa activity natin na to. So marami tayong uh, diniscuss dun na i-discuss natin ngayon. So let me just open the PowerPoint. Okay, I'm going to share this uh, PowerPoint with you guys, yung, yung PDF form ito. I'll do it after, no? I'll do it after. Kasi nagno-notes ako dito while I'm discussing, nagno-notes ako. So, ibibigay sa inyo, sa inyo yung may mga notes na para, ano, para makatulong din, no? Okay, nag-open na ba siya? Okay, so welcome to Module 1, guys, of our Business Finance. Uh, class. Let's uh, quickly look at the uh, learning objectives natin. At the end of module 1, dapat ma mag ma alam natin itong mga to, no? We should know how to... Okay. What's happening? It's not... Yeah. So let's take a look at our learning objectives. So we'd like to look at the role of uh, financial management and the different in individuals involved as far as financial management is concerned, especially in the context of a business. Yun ang pinakaano talaga natin, kasi business finance tong subject na to. Although sabi natin, we will uh, go down to another level, uh, yung personal finance, towards the end. But 90% uh, of our discussion will be more on corporate finance or business finance. So ano ba yung role ng financial management or sa corporate finance sa isang, sa isang firm, sa isang businesses? Sa isang business. And who are the persons involved uh, as far as corporate finance is concerned? We're going to take a look at three things. Yung ano ba yung mga financial institutions, instruments, at saka yung financial markets. Kanina medyo tinignan natin yung markets. Sabi natin, in terms of the duration of the security or the, uh, or the let's say, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, the security. Uh, meron tayong money markets. Meron tayong capital markets. So meron din tayong tinatawag na uh, in terms of uh, uh, yung source ng ano no ng uh, security meron tayong primary market at saka meron tayong secondary market there are also other types of markets uh, that specifically uh, uh, that specifically geared to the type of investment uh, being traded kunyari foreign uh, forex so foreign currency market ito yung trading ng different currencies meron tayong din tayong stock market no uh, stock market, as you, as you know, ang inaano dito yung stocks. Meron din tayong uh, uh, fixed income markets. Ang fixed income markets, ito yung mga bonds na yun ang tinitrade dito. Okay, so uh, uh, we're, we're going to take a look at ano ba yung mga different institutions, uh, ano ba yung iba't ibang klaseng instruments. Yung instruments, kanina may example tayo. Uh, diba, kanina diniscuss natin yung treasury bills. Treasury bonds, ito yung mga instruments, no? Diniscussin natin kanina yung bankers acceptance yung, or bills of exchange. These are the different types of financial instruments. Stocks, uh, bonds, these are the different types of instruments. So we're going to discuss them uh, in more detail as we go on. Tapos gusto din natin makita ano ba yung mga iba't ibang klaseng institutions uh, and their corresponding services. So can you give me examples of financial institutions? Example nun, investment banks, okay, uh, etc. So maraming class in financial institutions. We're going to discuss that. Uh, and then, as, as I said a while ago, yung mga instruments, ano ba yung iba't ibang class instruments? We're going to compare and contrast them. And lastly, itinan natin yung flow of funds. Flow of funds. Kasi sabi natin, guys, ang finance, ang pinaka 
ang pinaka purpose yan, ang pinaka role niyan is to manage the flow of cash, the flow of funds. So pag sinasabi natin flow of funds, it's not only a flow internal to the company, but it's also a flow outside the company. So relationships between companies, na, na, there's an exchange of goods and services uh, for, for cash. No? So yun tinatawag natin the flow of funds among players in a, uh, in a market or an, in an industry. Tapos anong role ng financial manager dyan? Okay, so these are the things that uh, we're going to discuss in module number one. Okay, so let me begin first by asking, what is the main objective of any business? Kanina, tinanong ko to, di ba? Okay, so let me just uh, uh, connect my digital pen. I have to un uh, disengage it kasi nagkaroon ako ng prob problema sa mouse. Okay, so okay. hopefully it's working now. Okay, it's working now. Now, a while ago, sabi natin, ano ba yung mga objectives ng isang business? May mga nabanggit ako doon, di ba? Uh, sabi ko kanina, pwede yung isang objective. One objective could be, okay, so may nag-chat dito. Okay, so uh, Job, huhuli na natin ito. Ah. Uh, sabi ni Job kasi maximize shareholder value. But let me discuss that last. Pero tam tama si Job, no? It's uh, maximizing shareholder value. So, pero sa inabi natin kanina dito, it's maximizing, one is to maximize profit. Diba? So, is maximizing profit the main objective of any business? Okay, take note, ang operative word ko dito, main. Okay, I'm not saying that maxim, profit maximization should not be an objective. The question is, is it the main objective? Meron pa tayong binagit kanina na uh, cost minimization, no? minimize cost. Cost minimization or binagid din natin, customer satisfaction. Okay. So these are very important objectives. No? Hindi natin sinasabi na uh, maximizing profit, hindi important objective yan. Far from it, guys. Far from it. What I'm saying here is that it should not be the main objective of a business. Profit maximization is important as an objective, but it should not be the main objective. To a certain degree, guys, uh, and then we'll discuss in a while kung bakit hindi dapat profit maximization. Related din sa cost minimization. No? How about customer satisfaction? Hindi ba ang customers, hindi ba sila yung life, lifeblood ng organization? Without the customers, mag exist ba yung organization? Hindi. They're the lifeblood of the organization. They're the heartbeat of the organization. Pag walang customers, saan kukuha ng, ano, ng resources? Saan kukuha ng sales yung company? Walang funds that will flow to the company. And the, eventually, the company will, will die a, uh, die a uh, natural death. Example yan, di ba? Nokia. Uh, hindi nyo inabutan guys si Nokia, pero pag sinabing cellphone dati noong 1990s, Nokia yan. I'm not sure if you were able to use, wala pa kayo nun eh. Most probably you were not yet alive at that time. Nokia, ano ba yung mga models sa atin nun? 910, 630. Okay, so the name of the game guys is Nokia and they controlled more than 90% I think of the market. Pangalawa lang sila Sony Ericsson, uh, si Ericsson, si Sony. But it was really Nokia. Okay, ano nangyari guys? Ano nangyari? Nokia rested in its own laurels. Nagkaroon ng mga operating systems na mas maganda. So si Nokia hindi, hindi nag-innovate, nag hindi sumunod. Akala nila na hindi aalis sa kanila yung customers sila. Doon sila nagkamali. No? So the customers stopped patronizing their product. So nawala si Nokia sa market. Uh, re recently, medyo nagkakaroon ng konti resurgence but I doubt if it will really be able to overtake uh, yung mga market leaders ngayon, Huawei, uh, iPhone, Samsung, <clears throat> medyo mahirap na na uh, tibagin yun unless Nokia is able to come up with, us, with a new technology that really far outweighs, far outperforms the other market leaders. So importante yung customer satisfaction. 
maraming namamatay na companies, guys, namamatay sila, nagpo-fold up sila, nagba-bankrupt, nagko-close kasi the customers stopped patronizing their product. So is customer satisfaction important? You bet, guys. Importante, importante yung customer satisfaction. Dapat nasa consciousness yan ng company na we're here also to uh, to provide services to the customers. Maging masaya sila. Kasi pag masaya sila, babalik yan. But the main objective, guys, as uh, uh, sino nag-chat kanina? Sorry, ah. Let me acknowledge yung sinabi ni uh, sinabi ni Job, no? Sabi ni Job na ang objective na main objective should be to maximize shareholder value. Okay? Ito dapat yung main objective. Pag sinabi natin guys shareholder value, what do we mean when we say shareholder value? Ano ba to? What is shareholder value? Shareholder value pertains to the stock price. Maximizing the stock price of the company. <clears throat> okay, example guys, Philippine example. When Jollibee first listed in the stock exchange, uh, hindi ko lang sigurado kung 15 pesos ba nung simula. Okay, or... Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I have to check my, my detail. No? Pero ngayon magana siya. So there was a time, last two years ago yata, naging 300 plus siya. So kung nag-invest ka sa Jollibee, 15 pesos, kunyari, binili mo siya. Uh, later on, after several years, again 300 plus na siya. No? Yun ang ibig sabihin ng maximizing shareholder value. Minaximize yung, yung, ano, yung value ng shareholder mo. Okay? How was it done? Part of that was to maximize profit. Pero hindi lang profit maximization yung tinignan. Overall, ang tinitingnan natin yung performance niya sa, sa market. And that can be measured by the stock price. Magkano na siya sa stock market? The stock market, the stock price is a barometer of how well the company is performing. Pag down yan, ibig sabihin, baka may, may palpak na, ano, na performance yung company. <clears throat> no? Okay, so again guys, I, I ask the question, ano ba yung main objective ng business? Is it to maximize profits? Okay? Or is it to satisfy customers? Don't get me wrong guys, important yung sati satisfying customers. In, in fact, naroon ditong six competitive advantage ng customer satisfaction. Pag nasasatisfy natin yung customers, naroon tayong repeat buying. Repeat purchase. Babalik at babalik yan, guys. Okay? Tapos, it doesn't matter, guys, kung tumaas yung price natin. Ang loyal customers, hindi siya masyadong sensitive sa pagtaas ng price. So, kahit na medyo tumaas yung price yan, kung loyal yan, hindi yan, hindi yan maglilipat ng bahay. Hindi yan pupunta dun sa ibang bahay, sa ibang product. Kasi, loyal siya Tested din niya yung quality. Alam niya na per magandang performance ng product ng company nito. So, hindi siya price sensitive. Unlike pag ang isang customer hindi siya loyal, sa konting uh, galaw lang ng price, ano yan, yung lilipat bahay yan, guys. <clears throat> That's what a disloyal customer is. Wala siyang pakialam, guys. Basta, ano yung, uh, basta price sensitive siya. No? Talagang tinitinan yung pricing. But not loyal customers. Not well-satisfied customers. Kaya nga sabi natin dito, pag satisfied yung customers, loyal yan in crisis. No? Loyal yan in crisis. No matter what happens, guys, pag, uh, ang loyal customer, they will stick with the company. Isa pa, guys, free advertising, yung word of mouth. Lalo na ngayon, guys. Diba? Yung recently, yung nangyari si Jollibee, yung uh, yung Tuwalia, no? Tuwal, Tuwalia Joy, di ba? Yung nag-deliver si Jollibee. Tapos, I don't know what happened dun sa price, process nila. Yung Chicken Joy, may towel. Naging parang mukhang, mukhang chicken yung towel. <coughs> may, sa Jollibee, sabi nga nila, may Chicken Joy ka na, may Tuwalia ka pa. Di ba? Uh, it is, it's funny, no? Uh, so, lalo na ngayon, guys, what I'm trying to say is that, is that in this age of digital... Uh, transformations, anything that the company does can either uh, catapult it to success or catapult it to, to failure. Okay? And yung mga customers, guys, maaasahan mo dito. Kasi magsasabi yan, ay, magaling yung product na yan, bili na kayo dyan. At talaga ba? Ano, pag mga, syempre, mga kaklase nyo, mga kaibigan nyo, pag narinig nyo yung isa, ay, ang galing dyan. Punta ka dyan. O kaya, ibili mo yung product na yan. 
the word of mouth can be a very powerful uh, as given by customer satisfaction. Free advertising to. Hindi kay kailangan bumili. The company does not need to uh, invest in uh, advertising sa TV, which is very expensive. No? <clears throat> Case to. Uh, pwede rin silang cross, pwede ka mag cross-selling dito sa, ano, sa, sa satisfied customers. Ang sabi, ang ibig sabihin ng cross-selling, if the customer patronizes a product, pwede mo siyang benta ng ibang products na, na ginagawa ng company. That's what you call cross-selling or one-stop shopping. Pwede siyang bumili ng iba, ibang products kasi meron na siyang impression sa ano eh, may perception na siya dun sa company na okay tong company na to. So, bibili ko dito. Okay, I'll stop for a while guys. Can you give me an example of companies that really um, makes this as a uh, sabi natin uh, uh, objective to and and companies are really very happy and uh, those customers are really very happy because of the product that they sell of the service etc can you give an example tapos kung maganda kung may personal experience kayo doon sige let's see okay starbucks sige aliam <clears throat> bakit what about starbucks uh, nasa sa sige liam as the customers who buy at Starbucks would um, still buy no matter how much they raise the price. Yeah, okay. Bakit kaya, no? What could be a reason? Kung bakit na, ano, ma- ang grabing customer loyalty naman, no? Starbucks. I think it's because it's shown as a status symbol. Stat- yun! Uh, I like that, no? Status symbol. May, may kwento ako. Lee, I'm sorry. I- i-inject ko na itong kwento ko. <coughs> There was a time, bagong dating yung ano, Starbucks sa Philippines, no? I think through Rustan siya, eh. So, bagong first first few establishments, no? Starbucks. Tama si Liam, eh. Status siya, eh, no? Status. So, sa Makati, I used to work sa Makati. No? Nanonotice ko na may, at, during lunch time, may mga tao na bababa, no? Tapos, magdadala sila ng ano, ng, actually, ako yun, ano. <laughs> Bibili ako sa Starbucks. Tapos, Ha, uh, ubos na yung cup, ubos na yung content ng cup. Tapos pag tapos na yung break time, hindi na ako pati yung mga kasama ko, no? aakyat kami. Dala-dala namin yung Starbucks coffee na empty na. What was it for, guys? What was it for? Kasi na binilian status. <laughs> it was meant ay, grabe tong tao, to Starbucks to. Like sa Starbucks, medyo ano to, high end. <laughs> high end to. Medyo ganung klase, guys, ano? So, pero pagpapasok na kami, pag medyo wala nang nakakita, itatapon na namin sa basura yung ano yun. So, it was, it was just meant to show the people that, ah, I have arrived. Uh, ano ako, Starbucks ang, hindi lang ako Nescafe, hindi ako ano, hindi lang ako uh, coffee sa tabi-tabi dyan. Starbucks to. Okay? So, image, no? Sabi nga ni, ano, ni Liam, that's very true. So, st- I think Starbucks has, uh, has uh, been able to generate really customer satisfaction. Kaya nga marami silang repeat prices. Tama si Liam eh, kahit na magtaas ng ano. Yung mga, ano yan, yung mga customers yan, hindi sila ganun ka price sensitive. Magtaas man si Starbucks ang price, hindi nilipat yan sa Mac, Mac Cafe. No? Iba yung target market ni Mac Cafe, iba si Starbucks. You get the point, guys? You get the point? Hello, puha ba? Yes, Okay. Any other, uh, another example, one other example. One other example about customer satisfaction. Isang company na mabibigay nyo. Of course, most companies naman tinatarget nila to, but some are more successful than others. Anyone, guys? Experience nyo? At talaga masasabi mo, grab, grab yung service na tong company na to. Kaya nga kahit medyo nagtataas sila ng presyo, talagang uh, and andun pa rin yung ano yung yung pag patronize ng customer sila any other example okay, meron pa <clears throat> you can just uh, sound off guys unmute yourself okay uh, okay maganda example nito si John no DLSU what about DLSU John sige nga uh, nagbibigay siya ng high quality education. Okay. Kita ba sa subject natin ngayon? Sana dyan nakikita. Ha? Kitang kita po. <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> fishing ano? Fishing? Fishing ako for. 
Dahil sige sige Jan, sorry, sorry for interrupting you. Sige, ano pa masasabi mo sa ano sa sa quality education? So, satisfied naman kayo sa education ng ano? Uh, quality education ni DLSU. Ikaw Jan, satisfied ka ba? Sa facilities din po, yung sa pag nagre-research, okay yung online library. Yeah, oo, tama, no? Very good yung facilities, yung resources that that uh, is given you compare that syempre sa mga ibang universities medyo talagang lamang ang DLS in terms of investing sa ano sa mga ganyang resources so education no yung mga top top 3 natin or top 5 uh, mga educational institutions uh, si UP Ateneo syempre la sal yung school natin and ano pa ba UST ito yung mga medyo nagrank sa ano no sa sa taas ng mga rank Okay, that's very true. Cost satisfied customers, and I, uh, according to statistics, I think that most of the senior high school eventually land in DLSU College. No, I think more than eighty percent. Yung iba, yung iba pupunta sa UP, a uh, small percent. Yung iba pupunta sa Ateneo, a small percent. But but a big chunk goes to DLSU. Bakit? May reason don. Kasi satisfied customers. Eh. Siyempre, uh, guys, yung sinabi nga natin, yung in-invest ng parents yung dito sa DL DLSU, hindi nila pinulot sa ano yan, hindi nila pinulot sa, sa tabi-tabi lang. Blood, sweat, and tears nila yan. So I'm sure your parents are very prudent in the wise use of resources. And nakikita din nila, so sana nakikita ng parents yun na quality education sa DLSU and they'll be willing to really spend, invest no, in your future. I'm sure your parents would want to do that. And, uh, and and put you in a very good school and in a very good institution. Mag, talaga mag, uh, ano, mag, uh, magsasacrifice yung parents yung just to put you in a good school, whether it's Ateneo or uh, UP or of course, syempre, uh, DLSU. <coughs> okay, so thank you, John, for that very good example. Okay, so important itong, itong ano guys, no? itong, six, uh, itong customer satisfaction because it provides uh, the company with a, a potential steady stream of uh, cash flows from sales uh, with the company. No? Okay. Okay. Sabi nga natin, <clears throat> ang customer satisfaction is one of the strongest indicators of customer loyalty. Magiging loyal yung customer natin kung satisfied sila. And this I mentioned already, pag satisfied yung customer, pag loyal yung customer, mag-repurchase yan. Babalik at babalik yan. You can engage in cross-selling. Yung ibang product mo, pwede i-offer mo yan sa, ano, sa customer. That's what we call cross-selling. And it reduces price sensitivity. Tumaas man because of, uh, uh, kunyari, tumaas yung cost components, ando dyan pa rin yan. And it will generate positive word of mouth. Okay? So that's what satisfied customers do. Okay, now, uh, sabi natin, importante ito. Kaso, guys, hindi lang dapat objective ang customer satisfaction but the main objective should be to maximize shareholder value not customer satisfaction okay ang i-compare ko ngayon guys okay kasi yung customer satisfaction related din sa profit maximization so they're one and the same feather ano customer satisfaction is almost the same as profit maximization now why not profit maximization why not customer satisfaction why shareholder value maximization <clears throat> Let me show you several reasons. No? Number one, in terms of planning duration. Okay? Sa planning, guys, ang problema ng profit maximization is this. No? Pag profit maximization, ang focus yung talaga, increase in profits. Yun ang paramount. Yun yung be all and end all. So, ang nangyayari dyan, the management might be tempted to cut back on expenses. No? Disc discretionary expenses. Example, Paano natin mapapataas yung profit? Kasi kailangan magre-report na tayo sa shareholders. So kung profit maximization ang end goal natin, magtanggal na tayo ng mga expenses na ano na hindi naman ganun kailangan. Di ba? Example, ba't pa tayo magte-training ng mga tao? No? Huwag na tayo mag-training ng mga tao. Gastos lang yan. Wala rin naman yan. Eh. So pag tinanggal yung mga training guys, training cost, training expenses, ano mangyayari? Mababawasan yung expense? Ano mangyayari? Tataas yung profit. Okay, that's profit maximization. Gaganda yung profit maximization. However, guys, to the detriment of long-term effects sa company. Pag hindi nyo train yung, yung mga employees nyo, 
that might lead into several efficiency issues later on. An unstrained staff, mga staff, kunyari front desk na hindi nyo man lang train kung paano sasagot sa customer. Nagalit yung customer, minura yung ano. Abay, minura din ng front desk. Ala, <laughs> ang training guys, guys sa front desk ng mga staff, kahit anong mura na ng uh, customer, they're trained not to answer back. They're trained how to softly answer customers. Eh, ang ginawa ni, ano, ginawa ni, ni, ano, ni uh, front desk. Hindi kasi train-train eh. Bakit hindi train-train? Eh, gastos lang yan. Okay, you see my point, guys? Huwag na yung training kasi wala din naman yan eh. As I said, anong mangyayari sa customers na yun? Wala na. Don't expect them back. Nagmurahan na. Okay? Unlike guys kapag train, ang train na yung mga front desk, for example, they're trying to handle customer complaints. Alam mo, ang gagaling sumagot niyan. <clears throat> train sila kung paano i-handle yung mga uh, very rude customers. They will not answer back, no? In, in the negative. Maggaling yan, mag-reply in such a way that maa-assuage nila yung galit ng customer. May, may biblical principle nga, do not answer a fool according to his folly. No? Ibig sabihin, huwag mong, huwag mong gagantihin yung galit ng galit. Gantihan mo siya ng soft answer. Uh, try to find a resolution kung paano mo ma, ma ano yung galit ng customer. <clears throat> it's just a basic example guys, pero it can mean hemorrhaging the company of its customers. Okay, so yun ang problema ng profit maximization. Tanggal expense dito, tanggal dun, tanggal dito. Kasi ang objective, short term. Para mapabango lang yung bottom line. Yun ang problema niyan. Tanggalin yung mga discretionary expenses. <clears throat> maintenance, ma mataas masyado yung maintenance eh, ng mga equipment. Bawasan na muna natin yan. Okay. O yun ang nangyari guys sa LRT natin dati. Sino yung hinar na, ano, na taga-maintain? Yung mga relative ng ano ng uh, mga officers na ng ano na uh, alam niyo naman yung politika sa atin ano. So, for, for a while guys yung LRT natin nako. Kawawa yung mga passengers natin doon. Again, anong ginawa? Well, cut back on uh, <coughs> discretionary expenditure. Naghanap ng uh, maintenance na hindi naman marunong. So, bakit? Para maka-save daw ng ano. Hindi naman talaga para maka-save, para mapunta lang sa packets nila. Yun ang yun ang problem. Okay, how, however guys, pag wealth maximization, kita nyo to. Okay, long term yung focus yan. No? It will be long term. Yan, ito importante. No? So discretionary expenditures like advertising, research, maintenance, training, hindi kinoconsider yan as expenditure. They are considered as investment. On the other hand, ito sa profit maximization, ang pagtawag yan, expenditures. Yan ang difference. Okay? Pag wealth maximization ang focus, guys, shareholder value maximization ang focus, long term yung tingin. How can we increase the stock price? Okay? So we might be uh, investing in in costs today. The the, uh, the immediate effect might be bababa yung profit, pero hindi. Long term kasi yung tingin natin eh. Training, maintenance, ads, research, Pag, pag profit maximization, research, research, wala namang gagawin niyo, wala namang, ano yan, uh, added lang na gasos yan. Tanggalin na yan, yung research na yan. Not knowing that its effect, it will impact the future. Yan, okay? So, planning duration, guys, short term plan pag profit maximization. Pag wealth maximization, long term yung, uh, yung goal niya, yung view. How about risk management? Ito, nako, importante ito, guys. Risk management, we know, guys, that a firm is, kailan natin, ha? ito yung firm, kunyari, no? Ito yung business. Ang firm, guys, exposed yan sa mga risk. Maraming risk na exposed yung firm. Okay, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, mga business risk, ano? Mga business risk. Meron tayong tinatawag na economic risk, eco risk. Meron tayong tinatawag na market risk. Yung, mar yung market risk is the risk that hindi na ipapatong na isang product, yung product nyo ng customers, ililipat na sila ng, ano, ng uh, provider. Okay, meron tayong uh, currency risk, FX risk. Kunyari, exporter yung company, importer. Okay? Pag yung nag-fluctuate yung exchange rate, delikado yun, no? Kunyari, importer siya. Okay, so anong nangyayari, 
importer nagiging uh, nagiging mataas yung dollar no it's very strong yung dollar <clears throat> so kunyari naging 60 pesos per 1 dollar kawawa yung mga importers kasi bibili sila dollar ang pagbili nila eh, no so kailangan nila ng <clears throat> na mas maraming pesos para makabili ng item na imported <clears throat> masaya naman yung exporter kasi pag magbebenta sila mas marami sila makukuha no na pesos kasi mas mat mas mataas yung value ng dollar okay so maraming classing risk pag profit maximization lang guys yung gagawin you don't care about hedging ano ba yung hedging okay pag-aaralan natin to in the future guys pag hedging kasi ang ginagawa natin we come up with uh, certain strategies para para nababakuran yung firm no? sorry ito we'll take a look at oops wala ah wait wait ayusin ko lang tong ano ko yung digital pad okay where is that ito. sorry guys ah Imagine may bakod tayo, no? may bakod dyan. So this is a, we're, we're hedging the firm against risk. Kasi, remember, iba't ibang klaseng risk ang pwedeng pumunta sa company. No? So to hedge against risk, the company should engage in certain activities. So paano niya tatanggalin yung risk? Paano niya mamitigate yung risk? Paano niya mamitigate yung risk? <coughs> well, Maraming pwedeng gawin, no? Ah, uh, dali na. Okay, may tinatawag tayong the company can invest in what we call derivatives. No? Have you heard of derivatives, guys? Ano ba yung derivatives? A derivative is a financial instrument whose value comes from an underlying asset. Ang tawag dyan, underlying asset, no? Of course, guys, pag minention ko to, sana tingnan-tingnan nyo rin sa internet, no? Uh, in your spare time, ano ba yung mga example ng derivatives? So example niya, let me just give you example. Four basic examples ng derivatives. Forwards, sorry. Forwards, no? May forwards, meron tayong futures, meron tayong options, meron tayong swaps, no? So these are examples of <clears throat> derivatives. Okay, uh, let me give an example lang. To. Let me give an example. Let me insert here a new slide. Okay. Bigay lang ako ng example ng ano. Ng... Okay. Okay. Let me just tell you guys a uh, mga mga mara actual cases to, no? Uh, <clears throat> Pero hindi ko na maalala yung numbers pero but the numbers are similar no. So for example you're an you're an oil com uh, a company that makes use of oil as uh, your raw material. Oil. Ito yung basic material natin, oil no. And alam naman natin guys yung yung price ng oil is very volatile. Depende yan sa season, depende yan sa availability ng stock. Syempre depende din yan sa OPEC. Depende din yan guys kung nag-aaway dun sa ano sa Middle East. Okay, depende yan din sa demand ng ng markets na matataas kung konsumo ng oil. For example, US, malakas konsumo ng oil. Pag winter sa kanila, mataas yung consumption nila ng oil, tataas yung price ng oil. Pag summer, medyo hindi mataas yung consumption nila, bumababa yung yung price ng oil. So maraming factors guys na nakaka sa oil, no? So let's assume guys na ang barrel per oil, kunyari nasa business tayo ng ang raw material natin is uh, is oil, no? So oil to, tapos sabi natin kunyari ang price per barrel ngayon, kunyari lang ha, $200 per barrel. Example lang to guys. I'm not sure about the price today. Okay. So as a finance manager, anong gagawin mo? Uh, today is June June 30. So may inventory tayo ng oil, tapos alam mo na December 31, mauubos na yung oil natin. So kailangan natin bumili. By December 31, ubus na yung stock natin ng oil. Kailangan tayo bumili ng oil. Okay. So what do we do in order to hedge the company against the fluctuation of the prices? Okay. So pwede tayong mag-hedge. No? Pag nag-profit maximization ka, guys, hindi mo masyadong papansinin yung hedging na yan kasi added gastos lang yan eh. Okay, so fast forward December 31. Ano nangyari? Oil, barrel of oil. Yung 200 guys, 
per barrel because of kunyari nag nagkaroon ng gera sa uh, Middle East, okay? Uh, so ano nangyari guys, yung price ng oil tumaas naging 500 per barrel. Okay. So what happens? Patay ka. Nung June 30, 200 pa lang yan. Ngayon, 500. That's uh, two times 2.5, no? Hand in your resignation letter as finance manager. Kasi you were not able to shield the company against that risk. Eh, hindi ko naman kontrolado yun eh. Kasi stock, ano yun eh. Uh, market, market, ano yun? Market forces, yes. Yes. Bakit hindi ka nag-hedge? Ah, may hedging pala. Pwede natin protektan yung asset natin. Yung asset kasi natin dito yung cash, no? Kasi yun ang gagamitin natin sa pagbili ng oil. Pwede ka mag-hedge. Paano yung hedge? Eh, punta ka sa derivatives market, no? Anong, gagamitin, anong gagawin mo sa derivatives market? Pwede ka mag-futures. So dito pwede tayo magpunta sa futures market. Okay, so let me just illustrate to you very quickly. Alam, matatapos sa pala yung time. <laughs> Sorry, futures. Okay, ang futures guys, ang gagawin natin, bibili na tayo ngayon ng oil. So punta ka sa futures market, <clears throat> bili tayo ng oil, kunyari, uh, worth 210, no? 210 dollars per barrel to be delivered on December 31. Okay? Oh, at least, uh, meron na tayong contract na uh, bibili tayo ng 1 million barrels, no? 1 million barrels of oil at 210 dollars per barrel December 31, no? December 31 ang delivery. Fast forward, December 31. Tumaas yung, yung price ng oil. Naging 500. O ano nangyari? Hero ka. Hero ka sa company kasi you'll be able to buy it at 210 lang. Kahit na ang spot price, you call it the spot price. No? Ibig sabihin, kung bibili ka sa market exactly on that time, yun ang spot price niya. $500 per barrel. Kaya may... Uh, so, minsan sa yung Western, naririnig yun sa ano natin, sa utilities, yung spot market. No? Yung spot market is a market uh, where you buy that item, kunyari electricity or power, at that specific point in time. Spot price. No? Yung presyo ngayon, at that time. So, on December 31, the spot price is 500, kunyari. No? So, hero ka para dun sa company kasi you, you were able to buy at 210, despite the fact that the spot price was 500. So, ang galing, no? Diba, guys? Okay ba yun? Paki-chat nga o paki, ano, paki, uh, uh, paki un unmute yourself kung, kung maganda yung strategy na yun, guys? Naiintindihan niyo ba yung guys yung sinasabi ko? Hello? Paki un un unmute na lang, please? Yes, pa. Yes, thank you. How about the rest, guys? Naiintindihan ba, naiintindihan ba yung example natin? Okay, good, good. Thank you. Dadalawa lang, tatatlo pa lang. Okay, iba, please, paki ano naman. Okay, chat naman, please, kung naintindihan yung example natin or kung may question kayo. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yan. Salamat ha, salamat. Uh, Na-appreciate uh, na ko guys. Yeah, thank you, uh, Abel. Maganda yung strategy. Yes, ang ganda, di ba? Ito guys yung hedging. Hedging. Pero, there's the other side of the coin, guys. Paano kung ang nangyari, December 31, what happened was, sorry, what happened was the spot price was naging $30 na lang. Ayun. <laughs> oh, ba? Patay din tayo, ba? Parang ito, dumb if you do, dumb if you don't, eh, ba? Mag-hedge tayo, patay ka. Hindi ka mag-hedge, patay ka rin, no? Yan. So, paano na lang yan? Eh, ano pala yun eh? Very uncertain pala yun eh. O, kaya nga pwede rin hedging guys na tayo tinatawag na options. So, punta tayo sa options market. Okay, ito na yun, no? Another type of derivatives is options. Ang options, ang kaibahan niya guys, hindi yung oil ang binibili natin. Ang binibili natin yung option to buy the oil. Kuha nyo guys, sa futures market, ang binibili mo yung oil. Now, now mo siya bibilin to be delivered at a future date, no? Yung, kaya nga futures ang tawag. Ang option, o oh, sige, bibili lang ng, ako ng option to buy 1 million, 1 million barrels at 210 on December 31. Okay. Pagdating ng December 31, kung ang spot price niya, 500, anong gagawin mo? I-exercise mo yung option. Bilhin mo talaga. Okay? 
kung ang nangyari naging 30 yung ano yung 30 dollars huwag mo bibilhin yung option don't exercise the option eh kung hindi ka nalugi guys hindi ka nalugi sa ano sa kung naging 30 na lang eh mababa lang naman yung options price parang ano lang yan parang uh, parang fee lang yan okay so this is a good investment this is a good investment well compared to futures lalo na pag volatile yung market many would opt to do options mag option sila Kasi at least kung matalo man sila, konti lang, yung option price lang. Okay, I hope you get the, uh, uh, it's almost time guys, I hope you get the illustration. <clears throat> okay, so uh, just to end this guys, yung pr pricing strategy, no? Pricing strategy, in terms of pricing strategy, pag profit maximization, ang tinitingnan, taasan mo nang taasan yung price. Kasi ang short term nga yung sinasabi, di ba? Pag wealth maximization, okay lang na medyo babaan natin yung price. Kasi yung objective natin, to earn market share, para mas maraming customer tayo. And little by little later on, pag dumadami na, mas nagiging loyal customer na, uh, maraming satisfied customer, then we can now increase the price a bit, no? Kasi mas nagiging less price sensitive na yan. So there's a difference in pricing strategy kung profit maximization versus shareholder wealth maximization. And also, capacity planning. Eh, huwag na tayong mag-improve ng ano, huwag na tayong mag-invest ng ano, ng na equipment kasi gastos lang talaga yan eh. No? Not realizing that ang wealth maximization kasi pinor project sa future. Kunyari, baka uh, mag-increase yung market natin. So maghanda na tayo ngayon. Mag-invest na tayo sa equipment, mag-invest na tayo sa machine para ready na tayo for capacity later on pag nag-increase yung market. Kasi ang projection natin, based on our research, tataas yung market, tataas yung uh, magpapatronize ng products at magiging times two, times three, etc. So with wealth maximization, ang ganda ng planning. Pag profit maximization, short-sighted planning. Okay? Alright, so uh, it's time guys. I'd like you to look at this triple bottom line. Titingnan natin to next next meeting. Ano, ano, ano ba ibig sabihin ng triple bottom line? Yung three piece or three is. Tama ba yung relo ko guys? Anong, anong relo na sa inyo? Anong time na sa inyo? Official time? 12.30 po. 12.30. Okay, so ibig sabihin mali itong relo ko. No? Okay, so uh, did you learn something today, guys? Uh, pa feedback naman kung natuto ba kayo, kung may natutunan ba kayo sa pinag-uusapan natin. Interesting ba to? Thank you, ah. Uh, paano naman, oh, kung uh, okay lang so far yung ano natin. Okay, mahiya mag ah. Uh, para at least gusto lang immediate, immediate feedback. Thank you, thank you, Jillian. Thank you. Okay, Ingrid, thank you. Okay. Salamat, guys. Salamat din naman saya kayo and interested kayo. Alright, so it's already time. Thank you so much guys. I post ko tong video natin and uh, please keep safe and enjoy the uh, rest of the week uh, ahead. Okay, salamat. Bye bye. Thank you sir. Thank you. 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 Th